In this video, we're going to talk about Echolemma, which is a unit testing code coverage tool. Now, what does that mean and why is it important? Well, Echolemma and code coverage tells us how much of our code base is covered by unit tests. As we write new code, that number should always increase. The amount of coverage should always increase, not decrease. If the amount of coverage decreases, we get into a situation called technical debt. Uh, technical debt is uh, when we write software and we have things that are not complete, and we continue to write against that software. This debt like a monetary debt, is going to cost us interest. So basically, the more we invest in something that's not complete, the more it's going to cost us in the long run. So the definition of done should include a unit test. And if our code coverage is decreasing, that means we're not writing unit tests for all the new features that we're writing, and that's increasing our technical debt. So, uh, code coverage is an important metric that we want to keep an eye on. Now, the good news is Echolemma does a good job of this, and it's very easy to install in Eclipse. I'm going to go to Help, and I'm going to go to the Eclipse Marketplace, and then I'm going to search for Echolemma, E-C-L-E-M-M-A, -E and search, and that's the one. So I'll choose Install. Okay, and that looks good, and I'll choose Confirm. Choose I Accept, of course, after reading the entire license agreement, and then Finish. Restart Eclipse. And now with Eclipse restarted, take a look at what happens when we right-click. I right-click, and I have a new option now in this menu that says Coverage As. So I'm going to choose Coverage As JUnit Test. It has found the test that I wrote in an earlier video, the unit test with Makito, and it has run that test. What it's showing me here is that I have 100% coverage of my business logic class, and this is the one that we tested in our Makito test uh, in a previous video. So that's good. You see that everything is green. That's good news. Okay, my DTO, let's take a look at our coverage there. You see, that's 68.9%. Because in this case, uh, I have tested several getters and setters, but not all of them. And one of my tests includes two string. UI, not looking so good. I don't have any unit test coverage there. Uh, in my entire project, I have 70.2% coverage. So I should run this regularly, and I should always hope for the number to go up. Uh, we don't want the number to go down. Let's see how we can make the number go up a little bit. If I take it the if I take a look at the UI, we're going to see that I have an execute method here that has an if test. And the if test is looking to see if a plant has a name redbud. If so, it's going to return search. Okay, uh, that looks like that's something that's going to be pretty easy to test. So I'll write a very quick test here. Uh, I typically am going to put uh, my tests in a package that is similar to the package being tested, but with the addition of the dot .test uh, sub-package. So we're going to say, this is UI, com.plantplaces.ui, and then finally we'll say, whoops, dot .test, and the name of this class is going to be test search plants, and the superclass is going to be test case our JUnit test case, and I choose OK. OK, uh, now I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say the at test annotation, and I'm going to say test search plants execute. OK, open curly, close curly, given search, oh, I, you know, I forgot, sorry, public void, given search plants, Uh, created with Redbud. Okay. When invoke execute. Oops. Then verify return success. Okay. Uh, a few things I want to do. Control Shift O organize imports which will give me my test annotation. Control-1 on each of these methods to create the method. I 
wrote the, I called the method before it was created. Okay, control M so we can see this in high def. Uh, control one, again, create the method. And finally, control one one more time and create the final method. Okay, uh, well, it looks like I should have said given there. I said give, that's close enough though. So we're going to say search plants, search plants equals new search plants. Okay, uh, control shift O, organize imports. I want to promote this, uh, the visibility of this from method level to field level. So we're going to say convert local variable to field. That looks good. Uh, okay, and we also want to say we've created with a red butt. So plant P, uh, plant equals new plant. And we'll say control shift O, organize imports and make the uh, proper, proper constructor there. Okay, plant, set name, red bud. Okay. Plant, set genus. And we don't really need all this. So, you know, actually, let's just cut it down to the bare minimum. Plant, set name, red bud. Let me verify that that's what our uh, search plants is looking for. So, search plants in our if test is looking for plant.getName equals red bud. Okay, works for me. So, plant.getName red bud. Search plants dot set plant and then we'll pass in that red bud that we've just created so we've satisfied our given when invoke execute okay control d take away that line uh, search plants execute now notice i'm cutting out a bit of uh, documentation here a bit of javadoc i would like to do javadoc uh, notice though that when we write a unit test we typically write very descriptive test method and then given when then as well search plants execute that's going to return a string uh, so let's assign that to a new field something that we can see whoops okay that's fine uh, something we can see across other methods finally then verify return success so i'm going to say assert equals the expected var var value is success and the value that we get back is this uh, string execute that's declared on line 13 execute okay uh, because it's in assert equals the JUnit test framework is going to run this if the two are equal uh, then it's going to return true or a green bar if the two are not equal it's going to return a red bar so let's save and everything looks good control it whoops uh, oops Control M, let's bring us back to windowed mode. Now remember, 70.2%, uh, we want to see something increase. So right click, cover JS, JUnit test, and we'll give it a moment to run. Looking much better now after it runs with 75.9%. So let's go back and take a look at our class uh, in the UI package called search plants. There we go. And what we see here is something interesting, and that is we see some colors we haven't seen before. We know green means that this is covered. Uh, red means this is not covered. And so you see here we have yellow. Yellow means we have an if test uh, that is partially covered. Now with an if test, we typically, uh, if tests are kind of brittle, to be honest with you, they're not good object-oriented design. So uh, first of all, think about how you can consolidate your if tests. But beyond that, uh, to make this entire block green, we are going to want to make a, a little, one more test maybe. So I'll say uh, add test. Okay, and then we'll say public void test search plants no red butt okay part of the uh, part of the benefit of given when then is the ability to reuse some of these givens whens and thens so i'm going to say given search plants created without red butt okay when invoke execute so you see i can reuse that when invoke execute then verify return uh well what does it return actually uh search plants returns no results then verify return no results okay uh control one create the method okay control one then verify and return no result uh, no results okay uh okay given search plants created without red bud 
Uh, we could create it with another plant or just an old plant if we want, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, let's make this a pawpaw. Okay, and save. Uh, then verify, where'd my other then go? Then verify, oh, you know what? Okay, then uh, I didn't make it. Okay, uh, then verify, return, no results. Okay, control S, control one and uh, create method okay and in this case we're going to say assert equals no results comma execute execute so you see with the given one then we can reuse parts of this some of the methods we can re reuse in different combinations after we write a large number of tests uh, we're going to get a little bit of efficiency by being able to assemble tests by uh, simply assembling existing given when then. Okay, control M, and let's try it one final time. 75.9% uh, coverage as J unit test. It's running the test, and you see now it's come to 78.3%. So let's go back to our UI, uh, search plants, and we see now we're looking a lot better. Um, it's still yellow though because we have not tested the plant is not equal to null. So to test this, we're going to pass a null plant in. Again, I'll do this very quickly. Uh, I'm going to say at test. Okay, and then public void test search plants null. Okay, open. Uh, we can reuse quite a bit here. We can reuse the when and the then. All we need is a new given. So see, because I've given it the at test annotation, that means the JUnit is going to look at this and execute these methods, and it knows it's going to find an assert. Given search plants created with null plant, okay, and save. Uh, this time, that's the only method we need to make, so we'll create the method. This is going to be very easy. Uh, this method to create a null plant all we need to do is not pass in a plant at all. So all I need to do here is just uh, call the constructor, like so. Control S and save, Control M, and let's do the coverage again. Okay, coverage as, J unit test. We're shooting for maybe slightly higher coverage, but more importantly, we're shooting for uh, no more yellow in our if test. Okay, 79% coverage slightly higher coverage than we had before and take a look sure enough the if test is now green because we have covered every possible condition of this if test so that's a quick look at echolemma and how it can uh, judge our code coverage for us this is something we want to run regularly so we can get an idea if our technical debt is increasing or decreasing and the goal is hopefully it's decreasing thanks for watching